Get close, baby. Another beautiful up and down. Johnny Walker have a promotion every year called the Stridey Man. Let's go and join them and see what happened in 2007. The Johnny Walker Stridey Man competition is an event where we brought eight finalists to Pazula. They were nominated via print in Golf Digest where the course entry went out in the, in the January issue. They've come to this amazing resort uh, courtesy of British Airways flying them in. And the event's not necessarily about the golf. It's about embodying their personalities. It's about really just seeing who they are as people. A lot of them have a variety of stories and different challenges which have brought them to this event. And uh, it's been amazing to see how they've risen from those challenges and used golf as one of those uh, vehicles to, to get them where they are today. Well, in 2001, I was in a huge car accident. Uh, the doctors pretty much gave me a very slim chance of full recovery. In fact, I've spoken to many doctors that said, it's not possible, I will limp for the rest of my life. I will not do any sport properly. Um, I just didn't believe them. I didn't, I, in fact, I just ignored them most of the time. July the 31st I was in the accident and around December 15th I was already hitting my first balls on the driving range. The doctor said I shouldn't. They said I must wait about a year before I touch a club. I said uh, I cannot do that. I started hitting balls. Probably f first month in January I already played my first nine holes back on the golf course. Obviously not very well, but uh, back on the golf course and enjoyed it so much. My goal was to become a scratch. I reached my goal early this year. In 2006, I uh, became a scratch and yeah, it's, it's motivated me, taught me a lot about life. It doesn't matter what the odds are, you, you never stop, you always continue until you reach your goal. Golf is something else. Um, I've realised that uh, in this game, you actually need to work hard. You know, when I started playing golf, it was way back, 2002, if you may think of that as a long time. Every evening, I used to be uh, at the range at least two to three hours working hard. I got hooked on the game and um, immediately I developed passion. I started loving the game. Started starting to hit shots that you, you admire and you, you picture the shot and you hit them. And um, I tell you, putting games, two games a week, Saturday and Sunday. I don't know, I always say to myself, I'm getting old. But I think if I keep on working hard, um, I, can, I can do something. I can maybe tomorrow attend pro. And I know for a fact because of the passion and what drives me inside, I think I can do better. In 2005, I was practicing golf with my professional, Julian Shaw. And I was an aspiring professional golfer and really wanted to make it working hard practicing every day and I had an unfortunate accident on the driving range where while I was hitting my five iron a sh stone shot up from my divot and basically ruptured my eye and since then it's it's been tough but luckily I had a good support system and, and people really took me and, and accepted me for who I am having one eye and, and didn't treat me any differently and and from that, I, I've learned so much and, and, and golf really taught me as well that it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from and what disability you have, you can always compete and, and just be yourself and be true to yourself and that will make you a better person at the end of the day. Um, playing uh, golf in nine provinces in just five days, um, that was my first Guinness World Record which I achieved in November of 2006. Um, not a lot of sleep, um, flying 3,800 kilometres and travelling 2,200 kilometres by car. Playing golf on six continents was probably um, the biggest adventure to date. Um, you know, I've decided that um, you know, my life's not going to be about um, getting to the grave and, and doing the journey to get there. It will rather be about um, sliding in on the day with um, a drink in the one hand, a box of chocolates in the other hand and then ultimately yelling out, you know, wow, what a trip. And that was probably one of those trips. Um, it was an experience for me meeting Donald Trump, 
um, traveling around the world. Um, you know, I don't even know anybody who's been around the world. I've been around the world playing golf in all the continents. So yeah, definitely one of the highlights of my life and definitely something that, that'll, that'll cherish for the rest of my life. I started playing ball sport early in my life. Um, and uh, when tennis became too much uh, in terms of injuries, uh, I picked up a golf club one day and, uh, and based my, um, my golf swing on, uh, on a forehand tennis shot uh, with a one arm. Um, I was very fortunate to, um, to be able to, um, uh, to reach a fairly good level of, of golf with one arm. Um, not realizing that it was actually a recognized sport or uh, that there were other guys doing this. I have a passion for the game and um, I've been very fortunate to incorporate it in my daily life. Uh, I now am part of the management team of a golf course in the Cape and uh, it's, a, it's an inspiration for me on a, on a continuous basis. I was traveling to Swaziland and then I had a very terrible accident. It was in 19, early 1998, and then uh, I broke my spine. And then from there, the doctors and the whatever, the, 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 the surgeons, they told me I won't work again. But because of I knew myself, and then I was a golfer by that time, and I was four handicapped, and then through golf, and then uh, through my determination and everything, and my friends and my family I stood up and then I walk again because of God. My, my development uh, side for young uh, golfers in Soweto is more on the mental side, encouraging them actually to actually complete their metrics so when they turn pro, they rounded player, understanding their strengths, their weaknesses. So I learned books with them. I've read a lot of books by uh, Dr. Bob Rattello. So I share with them, I lend them to them, and they share and discuss with me. But one of the things that has made me very excited is recently in the 702 birthday wish, I wish one of the birthday for one of the boys that he can get a golf sponsorship so that when he turns pro, he can be able to turn on something if he doesn't become uh, successful and 702 gladly was able to get sponsorship for him to attend a two-year program with uh, Damendi in, in Centurion. So those are the sort of things that are exciting, giving those young boys a, a break in their life that will make them to be able to, to break the cycle of poverty or a cycle of uh, strife that they had as they grew up. 1985, I contracted uh, meningitis. It uh, left me comatose for a couple of weeks. I shrank from uh, 70, 80 kilo, 20 something uh, young man to 43 kilos, and uh, I was deaf to boot. And uh, went through quite a traumatic uh, three month process of uh, recovery, which left me wheelchair bound and uh, not with a great deal of hope, uh, I guess, in, in, in the future. And uh, left uh, Wentworth Hospital from uh, KwaZulu-Natal Kuzulu and uh, flew back to Harare and uh, discovered a set of golf clubs in my Christmas bag. Um, at that stage, I couldn't really pick up a, a teacup. Um, I couldn't stand, I couldn't walk. Um, so it's not a comfortable position to find yourself in, uh, not envisaging yourself walking and uh, having a, um, a full life. And um, my family bought me a set of golf clubs. And uh, it was a set of golf clubs really that, uh, that got me out of the wheelchair. Uh, essentially we, um, we hit a couple of balls on the driving range, it was uh, not much more than I could do at the time and uh, then progressed to doing one hole and getting back home and doing two holes and getting back home and eventually migrating after some weeks and months to doing nine holes. Uh, I can't say that that was the start of my golf um, but it was certainly the start of me walking again. Golf this weekend on Supersport, a completely upgraded TPC Deer Run will play host to the John Deere Classic. John Sendon is a defending champion. 
And on Saturday and Sunday, it starts at 9 o'clock in the evening, and you can watch it on Supersport 1 CSN. One of the most beautiful golf courses in Scotland is at Loch Lomond, and they are going to be hosting the Barclays Scottish Open, won by Johan Edforce last year. 4 o'clock tomorrow you can watch it, and then over the weekend, 3 o'clock on Saturday and 4 o'clock on Sunday. There's also plenty of other golf to look out for this coming week on Supersport at these times. And if you find yourself in the free state at the beginning of August,